welcome to another episode of Accidental Jibe. We are here on the Purple Gallinule, which we have recently converted to electric drive. Yep, and we're here from New Hampshire. We've taken what we've worked on in the laboratory in our last episode, and we've gone ahead and done the install on board. Uh, let's take a look now. First, we're gonna look at the engine compartment and see how we've installed all the, all the components. And then I'll take you inside. I'll show you all the uh, components that are associated with the battery management system and charge controller and the computer systems. Here's our engine. Once upon a time, there was a diesel here. No more. Lots of spaghetti and wires. So here's the motor itself. This is a five kilowatt electric motor from Thunderstruck. It's connected to a transmission in the front which is then connected to the drive shaft and the propeller. Over on, nailed to the wall on the port side, first we have a charger, which will take 110 volts and charge the batteries. Up here we have, uh, have the cooling system. There are three fans that keep things cool. Then we have the Sevcon, which converts the 48 volt DC to 48 volt AC three phase and also handles the throttle and um, some of the uh, CAN bus system. Next we have our 48 volt bus, negative and positive. Everything comes into that with the high voltage side. Down here is a contactor to turn it all off. This is our battery. We have two 48 volt, 150 amp hour lithium MNC type batteries. Uh, they weigh about 110 pounds a piece and they pack quite a lot of energy into a small space. Inside is another contactor and over here, uh, the only thing on the starboard side is our solar charge controller. This is a Victron smart charger. Now I'm going to hand you through into the main salon where Kristen is waiting to explain the rest. All right, let's turn around in here and see where we are. Um, we are now inside. This is the companionway and there's Gary back in the engine room. Hey. Our two batteries are connected to battery management systems. Battery one and battery two. Instead of having Instead of having two, batter, two batteries working together, we decided to have the batteries separate to have redundant systems in case we have failures, since this is an untested system. And to that end, we instead of having a slave battery management system, we went with a second battery management system to keep them isolated, switchable between the two. Battery management system makes sure that all of the cells, the 13 cells in the battery, are equally charged. I'll show you that on the computer later. The charge controller manages the 110 volt charger that connects to our generator when we need to charge from generator or shore power. The onboard diagnostics link, OBD, provides us with the ability to read diagnostics from the system and give us real-time information on our uh, tablet, on our display. RPM of the motor, Temperature of the motor, temperature of the controller, how fast we're moving, the, the amperage being consumed by the batteries, the voltage of the batteries, all at our fingertips. Um, fuses for both the battery management systems that will take care of any issues if there's a power surge on the 12 volt system. Remember, all of this system is run by 12 volts, which comes from, apropos, two batteries, lead acid batteries, 
from our original system on board, our house system. It is recommended to keep the house system separate from the charging, the, the motor system um, by Thunderstruck and by a number of individuals we spoke with. That way we're not causing a drain on the primary batteries in order to run this system. They, it keeps the set systems separate. Um, in case we have issues here, we still have functionality and, and voltage here. We have fuses. We have fuses on our on, and circuit breakers on our solar panel. In case the, the solar panel tends it has an over overload, we have a um, remote wireless module to send our onboard diagnostics out to my tablet. We have a relay here, which is connected to the battery management system. If for any reason the battery management system determines that there is an overload condition it will send a signal to the relay which will turn off the solar charge controller understand that the solar charge controller from victron can have a, has a profile that can manage the batteries itself but the victron controller cannot communicate with the batteries through the can bus network that means that if there's a problem with the batteries the controller is going to still try to charge those batteries alleviating that by creating a, a interface between the battery management system and the charge controller via vis-a-vis -vis this relay will allow for communication at a very rudimentary level to turn off the charge controller if there's a fault recognized by the BMS thus averting any potential issue there unlikely as it may be that is pretty much the entire system from inside but there's the computer system. As these cables are connected, we can take a look at these two screens. I have two uh, serial, two USB connections, and a PuTTY terminal up for each window, which one for the battery management system, one for the EVCC, the charge controller. Let's focus in on the BMS at this point, and we'll take a look. I can look at configuration information and see that the battery right now is at 51.8 volts excellent I can also look at each individual cell by doing show cells and see that the voltages are all very close to each other within 0 .01, 0.01 volts standard deviation fantastic over here we can look at the charge controller we can do bring the cursor over to here show we can see that the charger is off and in standby mode and we can look at the configuration and we can see that the maximum voltage that will charge to is 52.8 volts um, you take that you determine what your maximum determine what your maximum voltage is for each cell in this case 4.1 volts per cell is maximum multiply 4.1 times 13 and that number is exactly 0.5 volts higher than 52.8. So it gives me a little bit of margin before I, I, I get into a, a situation charging where I'm charging more current than the battery can accept. So it gives me a half a volt buffer. Okay, one other thing we need to look at. Follow me. We're going to be looking at my phone here, which has information about the, the charge controller. This is wonderful. The, the Victron charge controller is connected by Bluetooth to my phone. We can get real-time information on the solar panel. Let's zoom in on this phone and take a look. Right now, the solar panels are providing not very much power because we're in the shade. 21 watts, and we can look at the amount of current going in and the voltage coming into the battery. It's taking, it's taking 70 volts from the panel and converting it down to 51.84 volts, which is acceptable by the battery. It's an excellent uh, piece of hardware and allows me to configure specifically absorption voltages, float voltages, um, and specify exactly how much I can actually go to. And I'm, I'm, I'm setting this at 53 volts as a maximum. Okay, that's enough. We've got information now to, to understand a little bit more what's going on. Um, and I'll, I'll send it back to Gary. 
So let's take a look at some of the, uh, the calculations, the math behind our battery and our motor, and see if we can try to understand that in more concrete terms. I'm going to break it down as simply as possible using the magic whiteboard. Magic whiteboard. So what we've got, we've got a battery that is a 150 amp hour battery at 50, we'll call it 50 volts to round it. So at 50 volts times 150 amps, that basically gives us 7,500 watts per hour, 7,500 watt hour battery. So that's a 7.5 kilowatt battery. The solar panel, at best, can put out 400 watts, which works out at eight amps, at 50 volts nominal, 400 watts per hour. Best we can do is 400 watts per hour, which means that for the solar panels to charge the battery, we're looking at 7,500 watts from the battery, divided by 400 watts to get 18.75 hours for the solar panels to charge the batteries. Yeah, it's a good amount of time. It's a little more than a couple days just to get the battery charged. So that's why we have a generator, which can put out four, can put out more than this, but our generator can only do 14 amps, 120 volts. It can put out 1,680 watts per hour, which translates to about eight hours for a full charge on the batteries. Our two kilowatt generator at max can only draw, we can only pull about 14 amps. So that's how it breaks down. Uh, it seems to be following in real life, but that's the math behind this. So that's our system and it seems to work quite well. Uh, it does have a whine when it's running, but it's so much quieter than the old diesel clankety clankety. Mm. And that whine was only from the, the heat shield that you installed to help with the temperature management. And half the whine is the, the cooling fans. Yeah, yeah. So a little, uh, a little acoustic insulation mm -hmm. on the uh, bottom of the hatch mm -hmm. would probably help. Now, also for our solar panels, we have six 100 watt panels. Now, four of them are connected in series mm -hmm. to make 48 volts nominal, which feeds the motor batteries, the lithiums. The other two feed the um, lead acid 12 volt house battery, bank, house bank hmm. which also provides us with light and navigation and YouTube cameras. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our little video. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you out there on um, the water. And on our next episode of the Accidental Jive. That it? That's it. Okay, I guess I can hit stop. <laughs>